Hey everybody, welcome to the oh, South. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, you're still putting stuff off. You sure you're not gonna be cold? Nah. It's my nipples will show. He's from Minnesota. I mean, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Minnesota. You're used to I it. was thinking my wife. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Hi, everyone. It's South by Southwest, and we're here to talk about it. I'm uh, Wesley Faulkner, by the way. I'm the weird one out of the group. He's your MC. Yeah. <laughs> Moderator, <laughs> I'm Miriam Joir, host of the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm Jeffrey Powers from geekazine.com. And there we go. And we thought, hey, let's podcast. But then we thought, how does it fit in with our normal podcast? And it didn't really. Yeah. So we're like, let's do this as a video. Because I brought the camera. Because you brought the camera. Right? I, I hauled the camera all day. Yeah. So I'm going to use it. And we thought that way we can put on our respective YouTube channels and you guys can all get to know each other or us all if you don't know each other. Yeah, so this is kind of an experiment. So if you like this, let us know if you want more. Exactly. And we can do that. Yeah. So Wesley, you've yes. got some topics. Yes, I topics. Mean, we're going to talk about all kinds of things South By. But, but first, let's talk about what is South By. You right? doing it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So South By Southwest is a festival that started off with three primary subjects interactive, music, and film. Uh, we usually all go just to interactive because that's where all the technology is. Um, this is the 32nd South By. Uh, I've been to 12, that was my 12th one. Uh, Jeffrey? Six or seven. Six or seven. Yeah. Uh, Ten-ish. Ten-ish. I, I mean, I took breaks too, so yeah. it's over yeah. the longest yeah. time. And so it's or been- We're veterans, that's yeah, the It's been growing every year. It started off with uh, all, always it, like everything being in one building. Uh, having one uh, keynote and it's grown to having like presidents. Uh, this year, a whole bunch of democratic uh, prospects are coming. Uh, we have uh, titans of industry uh, all doing major activations. Uh, if you've heard of the giant Westworld activation last year, that was here at South by this year, there's a, a Game of Thrones activation. That was pretty good. Bleed for yeah. the throne. Bleed for the throne. That's pretty awesome. So like a lot of publicity, a lot of movies, a lot of films, a lot of celebrities. And, and music. And a lot music. of music and comedy. 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 Yeah. comedy. No, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the New Negroes. Yeah. That was a great premiere. It's going to be on Comedy Central end of May. I think. Something like that. Yeah. 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 It was Fact check awesome. us on that. Just Google yeah. it. Yeah. So another thing I want to bring up about South by is that, you know, my first kind of like introduction to it was from reading the tech blogs mm -hmm. that I eventually start wrote for because I'm a tech journalist yeah. and I can gadget and stuff. And and so and it was like around the Web 2.0 pre smartphone, like 2004, 2005, yep. that time yep. frame where there was a lot going on, like Flickr was uh, was a thing, uh, you know, WordPress was a thing, yep. uh, et cetera. And then it kind of like, I, I put it on my radar. I was like, this is a, con to me, it looked like this is a conference or a festival where creative people go that are doing creative work in tech. Yeah. Yes. And I'm really interested in that because I love the intersection of technology and cre mm -hmm. creative work. Yeah. And so I was like, one day I want to go. And then I got the opportunity to do that when I was in Gadget, when I would come here to cover the show for tech, you know, more pure technology, even like things like hardware, because there's actually startups here showing, you know, consumer hardware tech. And then there's like med tech and all kinds of stuff. So we want to talk about some of this. And very important, you talked about activations. Yes. Twitter was launched here. Twitter was launched here. Uh, Foursquare was launched here. Foursquare was launched here. When, Others? When I, uh, when I, the first year, first year I came, it was uh, Meerkat versus Periscope. That's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. That's the last one that we had a big kind of like yeah. platform launch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the way in the beginning, like when you're talking about it, it was kind of a wild west of the world wide web where there weren't really, there were people pushing each other and the people were in the web. It was more collaborative than like, people fighting it out, trying to win. Right. So it, it was really uh, the cooperation and the conversations in the hall about techniques to make things better, to like engage more users, mm -hmm. to make just a generally better product. I think Mark Zuckerberg, when he initially launched Facebook, said that he would never have advertising. And like, uh -huh. this is this is the age that we're talking about yeah. of the, what the web was and, like. And while there's still a lot of that going on, it has changed radically since then, yeah. at least the interactive part. And you have to also understand the context of South By started as a film and a music festival and Interact was added later. So in that context, Austin is a city very well known for its music scene, right? Yeah. And, it, and so um, a lot of it was kind of like evolving this creative, you know, juice from music and film into mm -hmm. what this weird word interactive, which is really interactive 
arts, right? Like create what we think of creative today. So that includes, you know, any people who create that thing called content, videos, mm -hmm. you know, po but also developers, also all kinds of things. And so now Remember, GDC used to be here, right? Yeah, GDC also used to be here. Yeah. So well, there it's was, really interesting how it's evolved. There was also, there's also the question of, is can music survive at South by Southwest? Absolutely. Uh, a couple of years ago, yeah. I, came, I came for the whole thing two years ago because part of my coverage is music tech. And there's a lot of cool stuff, you know, analog is, is turning into digital and I wanted to start capturing more of that. So I was, hope, I was excited to see the expo hall. And then I found out that they got rid of the expo hall. And I found out, you know, that, you know, when a, uh, a company like LinkedIn or uh, LG, which are some of the companies that were here this year, they would buy out a, a, a building which would pay the rent for that building for the year. Yeah. Yeah. And so if, if they had, if they could do an activation like that, they would be set uh, as, as a city. Uh, and of course, then that hurt, hurts the music, but the music's still important. So now, uh, even though interactive technically ends tomorrow, there are still interactive panels until right. the end of the week. And same thing with music. There's some music stuff before and films. It's, it's like yeah. a big PBJ. And today is, by the way, it's Tuesday, March 11th. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the there's a, just recently, I think Close. they may even started last year, they started fusing panels. And so there used to be an interactive panel. You would have to have an interactive badge again. There used to be a music panel, so you have to have a music badge again. Yeah. Now they have fusion panels where you have, if you have any badge, you can yeah. go and see it because the content is a crossover. Yeah. I, I said Tuesday, but it's Monday. Monday, March 8th. Monday, 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 yes. So we when think, you say yeah. it's tomorrow, and tomorrow, Tuesday, March 12th. So yeah. um, when you watch this, you know, get, get context. By the way, the year is 2019, in case you're watching this in the future, and we're all robots. Yeah. Um, I am robot. But, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> But you have to say that because evergreen Buy content. Buy my t-shirt. Evergreen <laughs> content, right? Yeah. So, but I think the thing for me is even in the 10-ish years I've been coming, not counting the breaks, I've seen it change drastically. Yeah. And if you talk to anybody Absolutely. who's been for a long time, but you know, people come now, they have a very different experience. And that sense, it kind of reminds me of another thing I do every year, which is Burning Man. How oh, that evolves over mm -hmm. time, yeah. quite drastically. And so well, any, any festival any, evolves. You, know, you talk time. to people Even, and they're like, oh, South By is not the yeah. way it used to be. And like, but Burning Man is not the way it used to be. But. CES, another good example, yeah. really quick. I mean, yeah. it used to be the convention center and then it, then we had the uh, we had 2008. They had the uh, the the issues, the recession, and everything shrunk down. And then all of a sudden, it exploded. Now there's a CES North, West, East, and South. south and so same thing with South by Southwest, and the and of course the explosion, a hotel explosion yep. of downtown yeah. Austin. More venues because yeah. there's more real estate. Where I a mean, lot of fact, people are a lot of people are saying, hey, you know, the weirdness of Austin is going away for the corporate Austin. Now, I don't know if that's true or it not. It still feels pretty weird to there me. There is still a little weirdness. I, there, I so still yeah. think, also, I think economically it's made a huge impact. You live here. Yeah. You're the only one of the three of us who that's lives right. in Austin. I, so. I always see it. It's, it's uh, the, like you said, activations and then what, it's changed so much in terms of the money is the scale of the money because of the type of business before activations like we talked about westworld we talked about game of thrones mm -hmm. there were a lot of them that were b to c businesses trying to talk to consumers this year i've seen more b to b businesses yeah. than i've ever seen at south by there's sap there's accenture there's all of these ADP. companies there's adp also yeah um the the they're just trying to you know, you know, even the military government here uh, of companies and VCs, um, that the presence here is becoming more, how do I say it? It's like, if you want attention and status and notoriety, this is where, instead of launching a Twitter, this is where you launch your design strategy for your new brand right. for a company. And yeah. this is how you try to come out and say that, this is what my company stands for. We're cool and we're hip. We're at South by. And it gives so, you wondering. This is an IBM T-shirt because Wes yes. works at IBM. And so okay. IBM is another example of a company yeah. that's B two B. I think I have that T-shirt. Um, <laughs> and and related to all of this, I think we need to talk about. So we talked about the economic impact. I mean, it's obviously made a huge difference and changed Austin's light landscape and cityscape. And, uh, you know, as you said, some companies are just paying the rent for a whole year yeah. at this point. It's, it's pretty right. crazy. But I also think what's uh, interesting about South By is that from the get-go, this is one of the things I think hasn't changed 
from what I hear from people who used to go years ago and told me to go and then stop going themselves, mm -hmm. is the networking. Yeah. I mean, um, again, I think this fits in the spirit of what Austin is like as a city and this whole music background and music, you know, industry, not industry, but music, uh, a venue based, you know, uh, city, I guess. Austin mm -hmm. is highly venue based. Uh, that I think you see a lot of uh, collaborations and a lot of networking and a lot of uh, biz dev sounds kind of douchey, but tech is douchey these days. So when it fits in, I think. But I think, you know, it, there's a lot of this kind of like people, you know, getting to know each other and tr starting to figure out how they want to work together. And I see that more than mm -hmm. any of the other conferences, festival, trade shows that I attend for my for my tech coverage, which is mostly mobile technology. I would say that a lot of people who come here are super connectors. Yeah. So they have a big network and they're the people who are part of the network also come to South by. And then when a super connector knows another super connector, then they join their networks. Yeah, exactly. And they there's a lot of uh, serendipity and there's a lot of forming uh, of goodwill because you have person people with you that can vouch for other people, and then your network just grows exponentially for everyone. I know my network has grown. I mean, besides the fact that I played Gary Kasparov in chess this year. Yes. Which was awesome. <laughs> right. Well, I didn't um, even know that. And you beat yeah, him. Yeah, you, yeah. You I'll beat him, you didn't you? Did you beat him? Yeah, I beat him. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And, uh, but it, 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 I, as, as a smaller content producer living in Madison, Wisconsin, I was able to, every year, I am able to, and this this is even better than a CES or anything else because with CES you're you, you got a you're at a convention center and you're going from booth to booth to booth. You're getting your interviews and you're done. South by Southwest, this is a let's sit down and have a conversation yeah. just like or, this. Or one. let's so, go to a bar and drink. You yeah, know, there's a right. lot of that going on. It's not really my thing, but I get it because that's what some people want to do. Yeah. And you you know we know this in other cultures. Japan is very well known for their you know business deals happen over drinks. You know mm -hmm. after work like right. it's not. It, and I think that's very valid. And so you see a lot of that. And because that's probably why if you you know, have some preconceived notions about this event. And if you're watching this, you're probably thinking, yeah, I've heard lots of parties and lots of like, you know, craziness. And that's all true, but that's also true of the music venue type mm -hmm. stuff that's always been going on here. And the film industry is pretty crazy too. So, you yeah. know. Yeah, and it's a good glutton of smart people. And so when you hear that Gwyneth Paltrow is giving a talk, then you also hear that Amy Webb's giving a small talk. Mm -hmm. And then you always you self-select in the people who are drawn to the just pure celebrity instead of the cerebral conversation. Yeah. They go and do what they want and but this and you go into a small room and there and you can have Amy Webb tell you the future of what's gonna happen and then afterward have a 20 minute conversation with her. Yeah. And you could, you, you could actually be in a room with Amy Webb and, and Gwyneth Paltrow. Correct. Yeah, and that's talking to yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's happened a lot uh, in, in the last few days. I, I ran into Leonard Malton in the, yeah. in the hallway. So. Sam Rather was in the lobby earlier. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and also that also means that, you know, obviously there are some people who are celebrities, but mm -hmm. also are super smart. Yes. And so then you get kind of like the weird mix of the fans mm -hmm. that are just there to see their celebrity crush and of people who want to hear the great cerebral conversation that's, right. that's about to happen. Yeah, so it's very, absolutely. very cool that way. And so for me, you know, the reason I keep coming back is because I feel like I get an opportunity to meet new people and network. And I do, I am a bit of a mini note of my own. I think mm -hmm. we all are. Yeah. But I think at the same time, you know, I, I struggle with it because it is, you know, I don't always get quite the same value out of it as clearly other people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not always my, I'm not like, uh, you know, I live in San Francisco and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of work for myself. So I'm always working essentially. Yeah. And I like it that way because I'm passionate about what I do. But, you know, for me, it's really hard to like, you know, go party. And, and I, did, I have in the past, but it's not really something I'm interested in. So I have to try to find that kind of weird yeah. middle ground where, um, you know, and I'm, what I'm learning is that if you go digging about South By, there's a lot of stuff that happens that is not just going to bars and drinking. Mm -hmm. And and, and uh, there's actually some networking going on in you know, kind of quiet environments where people really can spend the time to get to know each other. And that's really what's cool about it. Yeah, it's really easy to get overwhelmed yeah. with just trying to figure out what oh, to yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, the choices are infinite and the choices that you have that no one talks about are only through access through this network that you build from going to the South by and learning. Um, who your friends are, who that you click with, and then referring you to, you should go here, you should meet this person. And that's the only really 
way to do South by is that yeah. you start from one point and then if you keep going and it'll only get better with that network as long as you keep it. I'll give a perfect example and then yeah. we'll get back onto our topics here really quick. And then yeah. our perfect example was a couple nights ago, all three of us were part of a group that we just, we got onto Facebook and somebody said, hey, meet at this hotel. And we all went to this hotel and we saw everybody else there and we all sat down and we found out what each other oh, the did. Link, it was a LinkedIn, LinkedIn local. Yeah. So it was yeah. a LinkedIn local group. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Brian Wallace, his group is amazing. And I uh, ran into him on the Expo Explorer. I didn't know he had a booth. Yeah. And yeah. then we talked about and we met all these people. I didn't know it. hardly anyone else. I didn't else know in anyone that other than you. Yeah. Yeah. And then we all connected and made sure that we can maintain this connection even after self by Absolutely. Yeah. So. And we have nothing necessarily in common, really, other than the fact that we're at South by. A lot of us are kind of nodes. And a lot of us have, you know, I think are kind of well known in the areas that we where we do stuff mm -hmm. and and sometimes our spheres will happen in this really interesting way and you know like now i know that if i want an infographic i'm probably gonna hit up brian yeah. i didn't know that the, he was kind of the guy yeah. so <laughs> now i do and now i don't think i need one but i might know someone who needs one and then i do the intro and then we're you know and that all happened because wesley said come to the linkedin thing at south by southwest 2019. yeah just for the record and that's exactly what we're talking about this yeah. kind of serendipity and you know, I've, I've also learned that, you know, as a journalist, when I used to attend it, I had to, you know, really schedule my time like I do at every event and, and plan, you know, meetings and briefings and see stuff and, and create the content. But I find that now that I attend it uh, primarily to judge the South by Southwest pitch, which is a, a, a startup uh, competition that happens here, I actually, you know, can kind of go with the flow. I, I can just go like, OK, I'm going to let things happen as they happen and not necessarily have a goal yeah and sometimes somebody says oh you should go to this talk and then i go to this talk and, yeah but i have no i don't i try to not have an agenda as much as possible just kind of like ebb and flow and get to meet people and some years is good and some years is not so good but it's also a thing about south by i think if you do come here do it multiple years it's kind of a long tail game really yeah. you, you don't really get too much i think out of, you get quite a bit out of going one year i think you can yeah but i think that it's really more about doing it multiple times and kind of like letting it simmer and yeah breathe. it reminds me of the first time i tried to skateboard like right. it was rockety it was like i could tell it was going to be fun i was really scared <laughs> felt uncomfortable and then after like doing it several times then a lot of that anxiety kind of goes away and then you can just stay on the track and then enjoy the ride and yeah. it just it takes some time you have to do it a few times um, and then you really understand the groove of Oh, I need to go over here. I understand that this there, there are lounges. I need food. I know where to go. I need something to drink. Uh, I, I need uh, I need to relax. I need to get away from everybody. Look, we found this room um, because of previous knowledge. And it's clearly part of South by. Yeah, and so and I think that's a perfect segue yeah. into uh, into yeah. what we're going to be talking about. So yeah. what, what what are the things that stood out for you? You made a list. Yes, because you're very organized. I, I have it here. Uh, the first thing is, I think um, we should, we should really talk about the elephant in the room. Well, elephant in the South by, and that's the, the transport. Yes. Yeah, transportation. transportation. I was going to talk about like, there's been transportation kind of controversies at South by many, many times. years. Yeah. Uh, there's a year that it rained constantly and the shuttles were useless. Um, there was the time where the city of Austin basically kicked out Uber and Lyft. Yep. Yeah, and that made things rough. Yeah, and then um, and now they're experimenting with like uh, pedestrian only ways here this year. Um, and this is the first year that we have all of the scooters and dockless bikes. Yeah, and that that made things interesting. One, try not to get hit, and <laughs> two, try not to hit people. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. three, having five companies compete for one another. And I've got some good anecdotes to share on that one. Yeah. Because, okay, so, you know, again, I don't think we can spend too much time on the background behind it, e scooters, but give you a quick synopsis on all start. You probably have them in your city now, and you probably, you know, maybe use them, maybe you don't use them, maybe you like them, maybe you don't. There's all kinds of ways to feel about the e-scooters. Mm -hmm. The reality is this, and this is my opinion, you don't have to agree, but this is, I'm gonna share what, what my thoughts are as somebody who does cover tech. I think that they're an extremely viable means of last mile transportation. And what I mean by that is if you have to travel four blocks in a city rapidly, 
Um, and it's not, the weather perm permits it. Like Austin is a perfect case. The weather is generally always nice. San Francisco is a perfect case. The weather is generally always nice. It might rain, but these things are water resistant anyway. So, you know, it's a great way to do that. And it's cheap. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's no denying that. Now there are all kinds of, there's all kinds of baggage that comes with that. The baggage being that, you know, ideally they should be written only on the streets ideally they should be writing written if you you know if you care for your health and safety with a helmet because if you like anything else if you fall on your head you're gonna hurt yourself uh you hurt yourself pretty badly it doesn't have to take much nope. um and not they don't provide helmets um and then the other thing is you know uh don't ride on the sidewalks which cyclists do too so there's not just a problem about the scooters yeah but the biggest one i think that's been very controversial at least when they did it in san francisco was that they didn't consult the city or anyone. They just did it and basically did a very startup San Francisco, Silicon Valley thing of disrupt, AKA, you know, quote unquote, which is basically means don't ask permission, ask forgiveness. And they dumped these scooters on the city. And what happened really rapidly is that people who use them, love them because it is really a great way of last mile transportation. And people who didn't use them hated them because they got in their way or is un they felt that it was unsafe or whatever. Yeah. But the biggest problem, the biggest problem, and it's the same problem we're seeing here, is that they end up in getting in your way when they're not in use. So they're like parked, basically dropped off in areas that are kind of in the way. And there's, it's very chaotic. Yeah. And for some people that's really hard to deal with. And for cities, I think it's not very sustainable. We've seen what happens in China. You can Google this. In China, they've had dockless bicycles for a long time, electric and non-electric. And there's entire city parks that were normal parks where people used to walk their dogs and chill out that are completely covered and unusable because they're graveyards of bikes yep. because people just abandon them. And then there's a pile and you can't get to the bikes at the bottom and then they get just abandoned. They, they get taken out of circulation on the app and that's it. And those companies don't seem to care about the impact. Now in the US, we probably have a bit more regulation around that. But Yeah, the, at, at South by Southwest, there were a lot of rules. Like for instance, there's 6th Street where uh, uh, the, where they go yeah, the basically go to the party, yeah. they, they block it off. Uh, and a regular week, they block it off two days a week, but this week they're gonna block it off starting at, uh, was it five o'clock until bar time. Uh, but you can't write, you can't write bikes, you can't write scooters, you can't write skateboards, you can't do anything. You gotta walk your stuff across the street down the street, whatever. Uh, but the other thing is they have the Wranglers. They have the uh, uh, Lyft is is one of the scooters. Lyft, uh, yeah. they have to they have to manage their own. They, they have to know exactly where all of them are. And they must know it because I'm staying at a hotel five miles away and there was a scooter sitting underneath a tree and they finally grabbed that one. Yeah, of course. So, no, know. Um, so they're, they're wrangling that. But the reality is at the end of this conference, those scooters will never be ridden again. Uh, yeah. Because of the lifespan of a scooter. Because How long do they last for? 23 days on average. That days. was something you told yes. me. Yes. Also, one thing that is uh, the magic of South By. I've had a couple of problems with these scooters. And most of it has to do with network congestion. Yeah. Because there are so many people on cell phones here. Yeah. Uh, Data I've is pretty bad I've right had now. problems unlocking. I have the worst. I have problems with relocking and where the clock is running. And I can't turn it off absolutely uh and that that is something that only like something like a big event of people with everyone's smartphones that you would run into here so it's a great stress test and you tell you to mention lyft and i would like to mention the other four companies so that everybody is in, i think there's only five so there's there's lyft uh there's jump which is uber there is uh spin there is a bird and there is line yeah. And and Lime and Bird are the ones that started it in San Francisco. And then I don't know where Spin came from. There's also Skip. Oh, there's Skip. I haven't seen those. I, I downloaded every every one that I was told that were, was going to be here them. in Austin. So we had yeah Uber, Lyft. Uh, there's a there's Curve apparently. Uh, skip, Jump, Bird, Lime, and Jump is Uber and Spin. So you can yeah. use Uber up for Jump. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but my point is that basically, it's the first time. I've ever, I, and I travel a lot internationally all the time. So I see the scooters at very least levels of deployment ever since this San Francisco experiment. Because right now they're banned in San Francisco. They're not there right now because they're trying to work it out with the city. Because the city said, look, you didn't, you should, all you have to do is work it out with us. We're giving you a permit. But now we're just going to impound them all and screw you. And, yeah. and you know, I think it's reasonable because it, they just didn't do it right. And they did very much, you know, Silicon Valley style. But in other cities, they got away with it. In other cities, they were smart and they worked it out with the cities. And so they're in various levels of deployments in various places, but you never really see more than Bird and Lime. And yep. then now, 
I think honestly for me, I and mean, I can't speak, I, I don't, I'm not an authority on this, but I might be correct that this is the first time that we've seen the jump ones, which are Uber and the Lyft ones ever in I've, the entire history of the universe. I could be wrong. I've seen jump ones maybe a few weeks back, but Lyft, I've never seen. Yeah, it's brand yeah, new. new. Yeah, the, those two came, uh, they said what, what I read before we got here is they came for South by Southwest. And it's a great stress test, right? Yeah. Especially with all the networking yes. issues. And, and then the other thing too is, I'll give you an example how it's kind of interesting. So, um, you know, I immediately, the only times I've, so I've only used, tried, tried three of them. Uh, Lyft, because I, I use Lyft all the time and I'm not a big fan of Uber. So I have the app already. So friction was zero, mm -hmm. yeah, right? I just start the app and there I am. I, they've got yeah, my credit card info and everything. So that was the first one I did. Then I did Uber just because, again, I had the app, zero friction. Yep. And Uber was advertising a zero to get started. You only pay for the minute, not for the actual initial rental. Oh, cool. So that, I was like, okay, I save a dollar, so let's try that. Even yep. though I don't like Uber as a company very much. So I did that. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, let's maybe support these smaller ones, right? And I'd say, okay, like I've done Lime and I've done um, Bird in, in San Francisco when they were still around. So let's try the one that I've never heard of, Spin. Yeah, and so. also they really, they really kind of enticed me. They gave me a card, five dollars free oh, online, nice. like for free credit. So guess what I did? I downloaded the app. I was incentivized by the five dollars for free. I put in my uh, my five my code and I got my five dollars. And then I went to unlock a a, 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 a a Spin scooter. And then it all fell apart. And I'll what, tell you why. Happened? No, it wasn't a technical problem. Hmm. It was a marketing problem. And I think, and I tweeted at them, but I haven't heard back. But here's what happened. I had to enter a credit card. Fine, I can understand that. They, you know, that the, the, the things are worth money. They want to be able to cover their expenses of maybe replacing one if I steal it. I get right. it. So I put it in my credit card. At that point, I'm like, okay, am I good to go? No, I had to spend $5 on my credit card. What? I had to like refill. The account was oh, five dollar minimum. It? Yeah, it's a charge based system. Wow. And so then, okay, the charge based system per se, I don't have a, a big issue right. with, but I'm just pointing out that I am sitting on five dollars of free rides that I cannot use unless I spend five dollars on my own card first. And then at that point I have ten dollars of credit on my last day at South by, which I know I'll never use, yeah. right? So Guess what I did? I use Lyft and Uber because they're frictionless. The app is already there. I don't have to refill. I don't have to do anything. And you just wasted your $5 on my thing and you never got any money from me and screw you. This is like F Xbox. Remember when they uh, had the point system and it wouldn't mm -hmm. map directly to the money system. And so you'd always have like a few cents or like 30 cents left over because you can use it to spend and you so they try to incentivize you saying well i already have a balance so i'm going to go keep using it's, it it's like your payless uh, uh cards right now they're going to be I, worthless uh, tomorrow yeah I'm tomorrow really, i'm actually tomorrow. Really honestly disappointed they didn't reply to my tweet considering my my twitter's and especially since you're following. at south by where they're trying to get yeah. like get the attention of like this so is a viable model i said screw you because you failed and i think as somebody who does a lot of marketing and and, and pr and and yeah. kind of like brand build, building as a consultant myself outside of my journalism work i think this is completely this how why you know people have the lyft and uber apps on their phones already yeah. like you are completely throwing shooting yeah. yourself in the foot throwing this out Bert, you throwed me out yeah. the window as a customer i'll never use it again yeah period I think I think the other companies. Uh, well, maybe I, I'd have to read the terms of service, but it, to be able to say, okay, after thirty days, if you have any credit left, we'd give it back to you, type thing. That that might be. A, you would think so. Uh, I, guess. I mean, but I don't know. Did that, I, I, that, I think the five dollar offer to get started was very generous, very, and very, generous. Incent, very interesting. But and I understand you're probably losing money on that. But like forcing me to spend five dollars of my own money to get five dollars of your money, is, and yeah. on top of that, all the friction of entering my credit card and blah blah blah. No, forget it. You're done. Yeah. yeah. yeah at that point, you lost me. Forget yeah. it. It's not good. Yeah, agreed. So that was my experience. I want to. Um, before we move on from this subject, I want to make sure that I point out that one thing that is a negative with all the scooters here is uh, a popular transportation method, especially for getting around crowds have been pedicabs. Yeah. I've seen them just sitting around. I've seen one or two actually have fares, but most of them 
are just sitting around not carrying anyone. Rainy Street was probably the best spot to get a pedicab mm -hmm. out of there. And I, it looked like they were doing okay, but you're absolutely right. There was yeah. there was a lot less pedicabs, but and I heard that there was a reason why. There's a warehouse fire. Right? There was a warehouse yeah. fire yeah. Uh, yeah. that uh, affected 150 pedicabs. But mm -hmm. all that in, uh, aside, they, they did have a good force out there. And, uh, and you know, I think they stayed towards the Rainy Street area and the backside of the convention center. Yeah. Uh, they weren't in the normal spots. Otherwise. And I'm guessing that pedestrian only zone only hurt, right? Yeah. They couldn't, since they can't traverse through there and yeah. there's a lot of people there and they couldn't pick up. Plus, and I wouldn't be surprised, and I don't know, so don't, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that Lyft and Uber and Bird decided to buy those areas where the pedicabs decided to use uh, basically set and ready to go so they could put their scooters But you know what's interesting? There. A few years ago, Lyft had, or no, it was Uber. Uber, had, yeah. You had could, pedicabs yeah, in there. Yeah, you could choose it. For yeah. South By. Yeah. So yeah. like, what I'm asking, what, like I want, I'm a huge supporter of, of I love cycling, uh, bicycles, like, you know, I want to support cycling in cities. Um, I think it's done wrong in many places, especially San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, but that being said, I support the pedicab and the people who do it and the whole industry. But I don't. My question to you is, to the pedicab world, is why don't you have an app? A and B, like why don't you like? I know I know it's hard to say this because these companies are massive, but like why don't you like organize around this to kind of like you know get a slice of the pie? Also, yeah. market yourself. Like I'm sorry, but the yeah. the, the, the little e-scooters. A completely different proposition. It's much different of an experience. It's first of all, one person at a time. It's to me very fast and very good for short distances. I see the pedicab more as like a slightly longer distance yeah. thing when you're in, with another person or two or three people. So I think that there is a market for the pedicab that is not really being marketed as it were. Yeah. And, and I don't it's know more a personal that. experience too. I mean, you have music yeah, and stuff. Yeah, music. They're, they're, you have a conversation. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah. fantastic. Well, it's, 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 what you're saying is also a problem with the general cab companies in every single city. city. Yeah. I mean, is many cities have apps now. Yeah, they're they're starting and they have really okay apps, and then they're and like in Madison, we have three different cab companies. And I think one of them doesn't have an app to that to their name, uh, and the the other ones they have okay ones. And uh, so when it comes to pedicabs, you know that 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 makes it even tougher, especially because there are some pedicabs that are running on their own. They're not they're not affiliated with a big group. They have their own bike, their own system. So. Like we saw a couple of years ago, the karaoke pedicab. Oh, yep, yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and and he came from New York, yeah. one pedicab. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so he it was his. If he took credit cards, that was his on him. Yeah, but I so. think that's. I mean, I agree all that, and I, I think that hailing a pedicab without an app should absolutely be a viable option, and yep. we should all do it. I'm not suggesting that the app is necessary. I'm just saying like. Like add some variety to the way people do it. And more importantly, I think, you know, the, the, the problem with credit card is solved by Square. Everybody can take Square. Yeah. And it's not, you know, there are issues with that. I know some people are going to say, oh, it costs me more than. But look, the reality is like in a business like this today, you pretty much have to take Square. I'm actually flabbergasted. And I don't understand this. How many merchants in every city I go to still don't use either Square or one of the alternatives yeah. that give me as a purchaser the option to pay cash, credit card by swipe, credit card by chip, credit card by NFC by tap, and phone by tap. Like, this should be universal by now. It's 2019, like, what the hell is going on here? Well, part of that would be on the credit card because the credit card does charge for- Oh, the, the transaction fees? Yeah, but I yeah thought, it's better than nothing though, But right? I thought Square yeah. was really aggressive on that. Well, Square is aggressive on that. But, but they're it, also it, competitors too, yeah. from own local banks and even credit unions that yeah. come with their own swipers or whatever. Yeah. Um, so so I mean, my, my final thought on the scooters really quick is, uh, you know, having that two wheel scooter idea is uh, going across the uh, 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 urban area is a great idea, but the, the roads need to be in a perfect condition. That's right. The scooter wheels need to be larger. Yeah. They need to have trike scooters. I think uh, if, if this is more all stability self, would be great. More stability, yeah. self-propelled self needs to have that in there. 
there is, and this is not a this is not a promotion. Although we have a friend that's that's working for this company, there's a there's a group out there called YourBikerGang.com. Yeah. They were doing. They have scooters that actually have bigger, wider wheels, so you can. It's, it was kind of like the tours, like the Segways uh, tours and stuff like that. Uh, so you could go and, and spend with a group, have a couple hours of fun, uh, something like that. If they could, if they had that in the city, they'd be safer to ride and there's got to be somebody out there or somewhere that they can ha hand out helmets uh that you can also uh use uh from uh, place a to place b yeah there's there's a whole bunch of giveaways like i saw people giving away sunglasses they should really just give away helmets helmets yeah yeah, yeah. something so. so the next subject is less you have anything else no. is no. the focus of south by they do some specialized tracks Every year it changes. Uh, last year, I think, it was cryptocurrency. This year was the cannabis business. So <laughs> the business of cannabis and legal cannabis. They're trying to get ahead of uh, any legalization nationwide of, of cannabis and opening it up to people actually being able to use major banks and to invest and to make sure and to start marketing well, like nationwide. Uh, what their products are. Did any of you see any people? First of all, there's three no. parts to this. Yeah. Uh, and we're not talking about the, the uh, blockchain side of it, but there's three parts to the cannabis business. First part is the actual smoking of marijuana, getting high and all that stuff. Second part is the CBD oil that yeah. uh that is uh that helps with your your health if you have a problem i have uh, i have bell's palsy for example and they say cbd help, oil helps with that and i agree with that um and i have used it i'll, I'll admit that e easily and then the third one is hemp production yep uh to it's be part able of the to make, bill, right yeah to yep. make to make clothes to make food to make you know uh, all this stuff uh it, that's so those three areas were the three areas that are discussed yeah uh and we ran into someone yesterday um, carrying a bong and uh, arthritic dog. And pulling an arthritic <laughs> yeah. dog down yeah. the radio flyer part. Yeah. It, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. They came in from San Francisco area and they are trying to hawk that their startup in terms of doing a chain of custody from the grow yard to the counter. They're selling it because a lot of the expense goes to making sure that um, the weight of a package when it leaves is the same weight of when it arrives, uh, <laughs> that no one's skimming off the top. Uh, and the, so there's a lot of regulations around it, and it gets really expensive if, if you try to have to go through all the rigmarole. And it's uh, using combination of blockchain and combination of cannabis business, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I yeah. mean, I know nothing about the cannabis business, so I don't really have much to say other than, you know, it's really interesting to see how, as it's gotten legalized in various states, it's evolving. I'm a big fan of, a big proponent of legalizing uh, recreational drugs. So I'm on board. I want to see, I want to see uh, that these businesses succeed and find ways to, you know, thrive. Right. And so if blockchain is, I mean, I really, be, I've, I talked about this, at a, I do a lot of speaking engagement. I talked at a, a conference in Croatia about a year ago about what are the five big future trends in technology that are going to change the world. And one of them is, is to me is blockchain. And, and it's not like Bitcoin. It's not like what when people think blockchain, they think, you know, cryptocurrency and they think like dark web or whatever and, and all that, you know, weird stuff. No, I mean, blockchain is an extremely powerful mathematical way of keeping track of things. Mm -hmm. And that can be used for money, but it can be used for like, you know, like in this case, you know, chain of, of production. Yeah. It can be used for uh, titles, for homes and ownership of copyrighted yeah. material. What if when everything that I created as a content creator was automatically given a unique blockchain, you know, entry, and then I, it can be traced back to me and, and I can, if you want, people can remix it and do whatever else and use it. And if I want to get paid for that, I can because I can keep track of it on the, on the blockchain. But if I don't want to get paid, I don't want to get paid. And it's still in the blockchain yeah. and it still can be attributed to me. That's the kind of stuff that gets, really turns me on about blockchain. Mm -hmm. The podcast group. Uh, podcasters, live streamers, video casters, they are very big in trying to figure out how can we take this to the next level for podcasting. 
And there's many different ways to do it because it's really just peer-to-peer -peer networking with encryption mm -hmm. attached to it. So you could easily uh, make a network for that. So that was one of the conversations in the new media space uh, that they were discussing. So yeah, it's definitely more than just, uh, here's money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to say this, and we can just wrap this up because the cannabis is is something that I, I didn't go to any sessions on, um, mm -hmm. just with talking with the people here. I think it is almost 100%, at least at this conference, destigmatized. Yeah, oh yeah. Not one person blinked, not one person had a problem with it. And that's what's cool about yeah. it. Yeah, and I think if uh, there are controversial subjects that are able to have a whole track and not one person complain about it, I think that shows a sign of something of the times, which, which is pretty cool. I think actually now that now that you said that, it makes me really think. This is this is the way that uh, that you can get things across because something else happened this year at South by Southwest that I've been really putting some thought into, and that is the uh, interview. One of the keynotes was with uh, Kathy Griffin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Griffin. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, as you remember, she uh, she tried some. Of course, she's a comedian, and comedians always have Especially to go outside the box or <laughs> push the box push the limits and she had that uh that uh, trump head uh bloody trump head which caused a lot of controversy so she took some time off and then now she was on stage for south by southwest one i i watched it, it was a really really great uh interview between her and uh Kara Swisher, Swisher. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, yeah. yeah and it was it was amazing but I'm, she's not going to be back on CNN for, for the uh, New Year's <laughs> Eve party by right. any means. But I have a feeling that she's now back into a spot where she can continue on with her career. So, And I've seen this, you know, the Winklevoss twins. I mean, yeah. the, I think that's this. It is, does this feel like a rehab. PR rehab coming yeah. to South by, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the Dancing of the, st South of the Stars by. version. Yeah. Of, uh, <laughs> PR rehab. <laughs> Dancing of the Stars. I like yeah. that. <laughs> Come to South by if you yeah. want to, uh, you know, abolish your sins. That being said, if I can jump off of that really quickly, I'm done. I think all of us, we've been together, we've done a lot of things, and we've done a lot of things on our own, and we've had our own special moments of South By. You mentioned Kasparov. Can you talk more about what that experience was like? Yeah, had? well, uh, just so you guys know, basically what happened was uh, a friend of mine was, uh, they had a call to have t uh, 10 chess players play Gary Kasparov. Uh, he was here for Avast to talk about uh, security and, uh, and and stuff like that. And so they had uh, 10 people sign up and then he was going to play all 10 people at the same time. I was going I was going there with the camera and just gonna get footage of the, of the whole event. And at that point, they, they, the 10th person never showed up. Actually, two people didn't show up and they filled one of the spots and they said, they said, can you do it? And it's like, yeah, you know, the last time I played chess was like college or something like that, but yeah. So I got in front of a board and, and lost in about six or seven moves. And, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> but you know, if I would have prepared, I, I really think I would have done better. But and you didn't walk away empty handed. No, got a signed chess board from that, uh, and then a whole bunch of swag uh, from that, and then the next activation that was happening at the Twitter house, and that was Fear the Walking Dead. So yeah. I got a really cool Fear the Walking Dead hat. So. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, one of my experiences is that. Um, this is my 12th South By, I said that before, um, but this was the first South By that I was invited to a special roundtable discussion. Mm -hmm. And it was with the VP of Postmates. It was me and there were several other people uh, in the room. There was three people from Google, there are two from Facebook. Um, well, one from Facebook, there was two of us from IBM and like someone from ADP and a lot of mayors, some from, you know, California, some from the Netherlands and overseas, um, all talking about how do we support the people who are in the gig economy? How do we right. uh, how do we pay help pay for their health care, but not but still keep them as contractors and not put them as employees because uh, the 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 company loves the benefits of having contractors, um, but they also care about the people, but they don't want to treat them as employee because that implies a whole bunch of other risk and, mm -hmm. and uh, business um, problems and complicates their business model. Uh, and so that discussion was just really engaging, really enriching and really personal. I think there was maybe, there were like 
15 of us in the room. Uh, and uh, it was really casual. Um, was it like a brain trust type thing? It, it, I, I, it, the, the weirdest thing is none of us knew each other in that room. Okay. And uh, so all of our perspectives, they were whoever curated this round table did a really good job. Uh, even people from the same company had different opinions and different ways of looking at it. Oh, uh, cool. And uh, they got very, like a diverse set of opinions about how to approach this problem. Uh, and uh, uh, it's my first year doing it. Um, they've probably done it for a while, but um, I'm not sure how I got on the list for the invite only. Uh, but it was a very unique experience that I would, uh, I would say really enriched my time because not only did I get to participate, but I got to hear all of these ideas about a problem that I've never felt that um, that I could participate in that could actually affect change. Um, Postmates is going to IPO. They're hearing all of this. They're considering how the the industry, they're considering how their users fit, view them as a company. And so this is something that definitely could eventually come back and um, push other industries to make the same changes. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Mary? Well, for me, what was one of the more delightful experiences? Um, so, you know, as I said earlier, briefly, uh, my podcast is about mobile technology. That's basically what I cover as a journalist, phones, laptops, anything that's around that, you know, headphones, speakers, things that are portable and mobile and that you use that are gadgets, that are technology that let you work and play anywhere you want. And so because of that, I've been very connected to the cell phone manufacturers and the PR person for HMD Global, the company who makes the current set of Nokia phones, um, is also the PR representative for ADP. Mm -hmm. Completely different, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, some because we were, I saw him at a Mobile Congress, which is a big trade show about cell phones that just happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, we were talking about you know some phone of some kind, and he and he said, "Hey, are you by any chance going to South by Southwest?" Because uh, people know that I go. And I said, "Yeah." And he says, "Well, I'm going for the first time." or maybe the second time, I can't remember. And I'm representing another client, ADP. And I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> and he says, there is a, a, we, you know, there's this one person I want you to meet who is works at ADP and is gonna speak. And we're kind of like pitching this to the media. And he says, I'm not pitching you because I know it's not in your alley, yeah. but I want you to come and meet her because she's an incredible person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, sure, I'll come. So I went to the talk and I met Martha Bird, who works at ADP who was absolutely an incredible person. And we totally hit it off. He introduced me afterwards. And so much so that yesterday, the day after her talk, we hung out oh. for like a couple of hours yeah, and, cool. and got to know each other and talked about technology. She's an anthropologist for ADP. And she basically does looks at all that anonymized big data and tries to figure out like how people move in the workspace because they actually have access to the data, right? Mm -hmm. And and how people leave, why people leave jobs and why people come to jobs and how you know all this happens and the, the, the analytics around that and the data. And uh, it was fascinating. And uh, you know, so that was my delightful moment. I met somebody, not only did I add somebody to my network, but I actually spent some quality time with them and talk about things that I normally don't deal with. Mm -hmm. And they talked, we talked about, she shared the stuff that I, she doesn't normally deal with. And we had this really great conversation and it was completely randomly facilitated by, you know, this wonderful PR person for Nokia, Ben. Hey, you know, and wow. it's like, That's awesome. I'm like, you know, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gone to a few sessions. I know you all have gone to a few sessions. Every year there's a general quality um, whether the speaker's good enough, whether that the line is too long and you don't actually get to go. <laughs> yeah, um, that is a problem. I would say the, the or like even finding some of these things because they're spread out around the city, mm -hmm. that's sometimes a problem. So the logistics around uh, the, the panels, uh, my personal experience is that I've gone, every session that I wanted to go to, I was able to get in. I didn't have any problems. And I think that's because I choose my sessions because I don't go to, um, <laughs> the, Trevor the, the Olivia Wilde, yeah. the Trevor yeah. Noah. I don't go to those things. Um, I only go for um, for the ones that are not going to be simulcast or, or recorded and play back later. Um, but what did you guys feel? Did you feel that it was better, worse, same, 
Um, well, I don't do the sessions as much as you do because my focus is getting the uh, the newness, the the underdogs, the uh, the uh, new ideas. Uh, so the expo center is is my jam, I guess you could call yeah. it. Um, as how well was, as how was your jam? As well, well, yeah, as what well, really quick, as well as other types of one on one sessions. I had a I I looked at a VR headset in a coffee shop, for example. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, but uh, the expo center was that uh, the Lucy one. Yeah, 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 me too. I got that. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, um, kudos to Lucy. Yeah, uh, and uh, basically, uh, the expo the expo has been changing so much because once again, like I said, with the with the music being this, what do we do with it? Uh, that's, that's I think that's the same thing with the expo. Uh, like for instance, yesterday the expo was open up. Let's say we're, we're right in a basically a two room uh, hall, so it can be split into two and then opened into one. And uh, yesterday, it was like half of it was was uh, was closed. And then today, all of a sudden, there was a whole bunch of new booths. Mm -hmm. And maybe tomorrow, there'll be even more booths. And then they'll close it again. And then uh, towards the end of the week, there'll be the gaming uh, part of South by Southwest will take over that whole area where the music used to be. So there's there and but they had music in there as well as uh, tech, as well as other things. And I don't know if they were trying to just make it a general okay this is an expo yeah um if you if you want to buy a booth buy a booth yeah. or whatnot um they had a lot of pavilions there the french pavilion uh all the countries all yeah. the countries that seemed bigger this year yeah. was that just me or no you're you're absolutely right yeah. i i worked uh I, I had an opportunity to go to south korea this last year to work with some of the startups and actually judge some of the startups and the one of the products that i picked as the winner called pivo which is a little phone device that uh, you can use to uh, self track if you're if you're if you're doing like a presentation or something like that uh -huh. or or anything like that uh, they were there uh, under an umbrella of South Korea a company a government company that brings those companies to the United States and other other places other events so they can get their name across so I saw a lot more of that and a lot less of the south by southwest type of uh, booth that we yeah. would normally see. You bring, you bring up something really interesting too. I don't really do that many sessions. I kind of like, if somebody tells me like, you should go see this, this is going to be worth it, I go. Right. Um, it brings up another thing. If you're watching and you're like, oh, this is really fascinating. I think I want to go to South by next year. And then you look at the batch prices, which by the way, go on sale immediately after the They're on sale now, right? You should probably buy it now because yeah. this goes yeah. up after that. But you're going to probably say, oh no, I can't do that. and. I would say actually you can do South by South by uh, sorry South by Southwest without a badge. I'm not yeah. wearing mine. It's over there. Yeah. But like you can like there is enough going on that doesn't require a badge, um, and you, definitely for the networking you don't need really need a badge. It's only if you want to go to the sessions and the show floor mm -hmm. that you need a badge. And Some official parties. Here Some official there. parties. But my my point is I'm not discouraging you from getting a badge. You should if you want. You know if you can. But. Um, there's way more to South by than than the badge, yeah. and that's actually not true of many places that I go yeah. to. Like a lot of the conferences and and trade shows and festivals mm -hmm. they attend, you pretty much need a badge because otherwise you're not getting part of the action. But here, I would say a good half of what's or more that's going on is outside of the actual purview and of the badge. If you really yeah. want to get in, there are day passes. Yeah, and there are they, day passes. they don't cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, you know? and and the thing is also. Some official events also don't require a badge. They're free. Like yeah. we did the Game of Thrones, like Bleed for the Throne, and we didn't need a badge for that. No, we did not. They didn't ask for I that. don't know. Did the Facebook or Google uh, sessions? No, I, th I think those, uh, you mean the rooms or the buildings or the oh, activations? Yeah, like that. I didn't go to any of those. Yeah. But like you went to another big activation. Was it God's oh. Omens or Omens? Oh, well, I was just at the, 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 um, uh, yeah, the, the uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of it. The, the um, Amazon's coming out with yeah. a new uh, Yeah, new the David show. Tennant uh, yeah. Amazon. Good, right. good Omens. Omens, that's it. Good yeah. Omens. Good omens. Yeah. And I saw that there was a badge line and there was a non-badge line. And mm. that was a huge activation, South by Sanction, and they're still letting people in yeah. without badges. Yeah. yeah. There was one other, uh, well, I, I won't talk about the brand, but we went to another, I guess we did need a badge for that one, that, in this building, the Italian place in this building. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, but that, that, 
Now this is this is another thing for if you if you work with a company that is big in with South by Southwest, that's a good reason to go. Yeah. Because they'll uh, they'll have a lot of tracks and they'll get you in even yeah. a lot of customer lounges stuff. for these yeah. large brands and to bring their customers in. Yeah. And like all and like all conferences and trade shows and, and festivals, if you're media, you can get in for free, but obviously you have to work and. Uh, South by has some pretty specific requirements. Obviously, you certainly need a certain amount of traffic on your publication, but more importantly, they want you to prove that you've covered the show by publishing, by showing them what you publish after the fact. They're one of the few that requires this. But so it's, a, it's probably a little harder to get in as media than other shows, but you, it's possible. And then, well, actually, I saw CES. CES is kind of following that same thing, you know, what's your website like and stuff like that. If I can get in, you can get on. Yeah, there you go. exactly. <laughs> and uh, the reason why I am and and was this one of the, the tracks is that you could also volunteer. Right. So South by is, has an EDU where it's uh, three days before the, the big South by starts and you can volunteer for that event and then use the credits to come to uh, the, the South by as a whole. And uh, if you're a speaker, yeah. you know, you can get in as well. So yeah. you can apply and yeah. do it right now. There's a, on the website, they're taking, uh, you know, they're probably going to take applications very soon for speakers. Yeah, the, it's called the panel picker and it'll happen uh, in about 60 to 90 days. And now. then the other option is, you know, there's all kinds of other gigs. Like, you know, I, I'm a judge on the South by Southwest pitch. So that's how I get right. my, my badge every year. And, and you know, you can, I, I would look into other things, but ultimately you don't have to have one and it's definitely worth checking out. Oh, yeah. and, and volunteer. Yeah. Yeah, you just said yeah, that. Yeah, oh, and I'm on the that. advisory board, uh, which means I'm one of the groups that actually uh, goes through all the panels that are submitted and help pick the ones that get pushed over to the next round to get invited to speak so that's um, why mine didn't get picked <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, as a as a judge i recuse i recuse myself from anything that is personally like um, yeah that I have the, you have uh, to yeah exactly yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah it's very they're very strict about that um so it's it's the it's really great way of making sure that it's accessible um they also have uh, when they do spotlights uh, for instance, like the cannabis business, you, they can you can solicit saying, "Hey, I'm part of this," and they can invite you to speak even through outside the uh, invite um, and uh, the process because they're trying to build up and really highlight these t- type of efforts. Um, I remember when they were trying to, they had a blacks in tech, um, and so they had another section of even people who submitted panels got refused. They reached back out to them and said, "Hey." Uh, we're opening up a whole section just so to make sure that we can invite more people uh, to to highlight uh, this effort that we're trying to make they sure used that to people be, are supported. They used to be very closed on that, and they've and it definitely opened. I've noticed they open up. In fact, this last year, uh, this year, uh, one of our friends, uh, Esprit, yeah, she uh, she she was doing the podcaster meetup, and then they they contacted her and they said, "We've got this other session. They backed out. You want to be part of it?" Yeah, yeah. and I was like. Yes. So it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, there's, there's still opportunity, yeah. even if, uh, if you don't get that initial. One thing push. I have to say, being part of the advisory board and also going to South by for this many years, uh, everyone gets a survey and uh, they really take feedback. And every year they're trying to get better and better. There might be some new things they try, but they iterate. And uh, if, for some reason that you you try to get here and you can't, uh, email South by they they listen yeah. they care. And then you know the other thing that's great if you are if you come uh, where, whether you get a badge or not if you come there's all kinds of events that cater to minorities and this is great. As of myself, I'm a woman in tech, you know I'm queer and there's tons of stuff I could do here that is kind of like in that sphere and it's really nice to have that. And, mm-hmm. and the, the organization really supports it too, the yep. diversity, which is really, really great. It's not the case for a lot of trade shows and conferences, especially in tech. And it's really nice to see. I think, I really think South By is really very good at spearheading that. Actually, really. as a person who picks panels, one of the criteria that we use is how diverse is the panel right. to judge. And the diversity is on many spectrums. Sometimes it's gender. Um, sometimes it is location, like if you are foreign, um, like not from the U.S., I shouldn't say foreign, uh, if you're not here domestically, um, there, there are so many facets. So if you also feel like you don't have something strong enough to pitch from a speaker gig, pal up with someone else. And uh, if you can just find a diverse group, uh, then you have a greater chance yeah, of getting it submitted. 
tons of groups out there, not just in South by Southwest land, but on Facebook, on Slack, on Reddit, on, you just go out there and say, hey, I'm looking to put this together. Is there anybody else that has a uh, similar interest on that? And you're gonna find people. Yeah, and there's meetup groups, right? Yeah. So like uh, you talk about this, Bree, she's a podcaster. You can, you can suggest that there be a podcaster meetup. You could do like a furry meetup if that's what you're into. Uh, you could do- <laughs> Wait a minute, how that yeah. like, what? <laughs> you, you could do like find your niche if you think that you can get enough people- Furries for cannabis. Yeah, furries for cannabis. Um, uh, on scooters. Yeah, you, if you are really passionate about something and if you're watching this, you probably are. Um, so, so Especially just, at this long. So. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you Sign watch this up. far, you're, yeah. you're, you're doing really well. <laughs> the so, ad starts now. <laughs> Speaking of which, should, should we wrap it up? Yeah, we should probably wrap it up. Oh, was, right. there, was there any other subjects that we missed? Uh, the parties. We didn't really talk about parties. Uh, There's lots of parties. Parties, yeah. they drink, they get food, you know, yeah. network. Uh, Hot and cold, running speak, alcohol. Yeah. If you can speak and it's... Lo not too loud you can probably network yes you get some special dinners you have uh, where you can really network with the high high yeah. we should give a shout out to the media lounge um yes which is the mercedes all, media lounge yeah the mercedes media lounge also uh first year mercedes has had a media lounge it it was good it was great i hope they come back they were off they had an off-site location that was uh where you have special speakers i saw amy webb uh we talked for like 30 minutes uh, met her husband. It was great. Um, they have uh, test driving their concept car that's not even available yet. Um, uh, so I just wanted to make sure to give them a shout out because it's run by um, some good friends of ours, um, Brian Solis and uh, Stephanie, Agressa. Stephanie Agressa. So uh, they, they always do it. And they all always do it up, and they do it well. So, and but. and we'll talk about the regular media because that's how our press passes get uh, yeah. get uh, taken. That's uh, Carnegie Mellon University mm -hmm. that hosted that this year, and the the lounge was awesome, especially because I got to also spend a couple of days on the EDU side of mm -hmm. South by Southwest and got some great content there. So, um, so a shout out to them too. Yeah. yeah, and that's a wrap. That's right. I'm Wesley Faulkner. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Wesley eighty three. And you work for IBM. And I work for IBM. I work in dev, dev, dev advocacy. So like if you're a dev and you're interested in IBM technology, you can reach out to me. Uh, uh, I prefer Twitter. You can also reach out on LinkedIn, uh, send me a message if you have any problems or if you're just curious and you want to learn more about me and the company, just say hi. And I'm Miriam Joar uh, at Tank Girl on Twitter. That's T-N-K-G-R-L. Drop the vowels, comic book uh, character, Tank Girl, same thing. Uh, and uh, that's also my Instagram handle. So if you want cool photos, go check it out. Uh, and then finally, my podcast is Mobile Tech Podcast. That's mobiletechpodcast.com. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Overcast, TuneIn Radio, pretty much everywhere. Uh, and I say we, the royal we. I'm the person basically doing it. So check it out. And uh, there's a YouTube channel that goes with the podcast where I do a bit of video content to kind of match, uh, and I'll be publishing this video on it, uh, to kind of match the content on the podcast. And it's uh, it's basically my, my name on, on YouTube. So youtube.com slash Miriam Joir. If you don't know how to spell that, I'm sure there'll be a bottom one third, but even if there isn't, uh, just go to my Twitter and look for my name. So Tank Girl Without the Vowels, my name, add that to the youtube.com URL and you get to my channel. So like the channel, subscribe, subscribe to the podcast, tell your friends all that good stuff. And if you're watching this completely randomly and you don't really know anything uh, about, about what I do as a journalist, I'm also a consultant. I have a, I have a company that helps startups in the hardware space and consumer hardware space launch products, go to market with their products. So you know, hit me up again. Twitter is probably the best way. Uh, and and uh, and we'll go from there. And then you can find me at Geekazine. Think Magazine put in the geek. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Once again, I also have a YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Geekazine. Actually, if you do a Google search, just put Geekazine. You'll find, find me no matter what it is. So, uh, and yeah, definitely like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification for those videos so you know when the next ones are going to come out. And uh, let us know what you thought about this video, what you thought about South by Southwest, what you might have liked, what you might have not liked if you were here, uh, what what you got to see and, you know, contact with us because we might, we might yeah. just uh, get online and, and do a couple post 
South by Southwest oh, yeah. if, if we've yeah. got exactly. more content out of it. And, you know, we will link to each other's various social things down in the description below. So yeah. just look for that. So let's see, I'll be uh, see no evil, you'll be... <laughs> Hear no evil. Uh, yeah, speak no evil. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's our photo for the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Take right. care. Geek Bye. out.